Hi everybody, Captain L speaking with your training tips designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Have a seat, let's strap in and stow the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Our briefing today is going to cover the electronic flight instrument system. We'll be looking at the display system and a little bit on instrument switching uh, of those displays. Uh, the displays on the 747-400 are 8-inch uh, displays. They're square displays. Depending on the airplane, uh, these displays could be smaller or larger. On the 757-767, they were much smaller displays. But on the 787, they're much bigger displays. Uh, the 747 kind of came in between those two airplanes. Uh, so at the time, these were actually very large displays. There is an outboard display unit, or DU, and there is an inboard display unit, or DU. These two display units for the captain and the two display units for the first officer comprise the electronic flight instrument system. The PFD is normally on the outboard display unit, and the ND, or navigation display, is normally on the inboard display unit. The PFD combines uh, many traditional flight instruments into one, and so you can see we have airspeed information, we have attitude information, we have flight director information, we have heading information, we have flight mode enunciation information. We have autopilot flight director engaged status information. We have radio altitude information. We have altitude information. We have vertical speed information. On the navigation display, there's four modes to this display. We happen to be in the map mode right now. The map mode represents a moving map representation of our route of flight. And, of course, the ND, or navigation display, has symbology that we'll talk about when we get into that portion of the, uh, of the training. The captain's forward instrument panel, again, consists of the PFD and the ND. That's uh, the EFIS uh, flight control system for the captain. And above those display units, you'll see there's two uh, switches. They provide for automatic switching and they also provide for manual switching in the case of failure of the automatic system. These two switches are for the inboard CRT and the lower CRT. Again, the inboard CRT would be this display. The lower CRT would be for the lower display unit, which is not uh, pictured here. Even though these switches are called CRT switches, the displays themselves could be uh, LCDs, uh, depending on whether the um, liquid crystal displays have been put in. Uh, in most newer airplanes or latest generation airplanes, they do consist of LCD displays. In the earlier airplanes, when these airplanes first came out, they were cathode ray tubes. And now, of course, as technology marches on, they've been replaced by more efficient uh, LCD displays. Here's a view of the uh, forward instrument panel where you can see the relationship between uh, the captain's flight instrument system and the first officer's flight instrument system. Again, each pilot has an outboard and an inboard DU, and normally the PFD is on the outboard and the ND is on the inboard display unit. In the event of a outboard display unit failure, the display would go blank. And that display, which normally will house the PFD, is protected. So with the inboard CRT switch in normal, the PFD will automatically transfer from the outboard display unit to the inboard display unit. Why is it protected? Well, it's protected because it has all our flight information on it. And that flight information is important to know what the airplane is doing and pitch, roll, thrust, attitude, speed, heading, altitude, vertical speed. We want to see that information. So it is protected.
If for any reason the automatic switching does not work, then we could force the PFD to move from the outboard DU to the inboard DU. How would we know that? Well, we'd know it by the fact that the outboard DU would go blank and the inboard display unit would still show the ND or the navigation display. In that case, we could reach up. We could take our inboard CRT switch and take it from the normal position to the PFD position, and that would force the PFD to move from the outboard to the inboard. Then, because the navigation display is not here and not displayed, we could take our lower CRT switch and we could move it from normal to ND, and that would force the navigation display to move to the lower display unit, which is down uh, below, which is not pictured uh, in this particular slide. So let's take a look at the virtual sim and take a look at how some of the switching looks in the simulator. So first we'll take a look here at what the display unit looks like when they're all blank. Now in this case, all we've done is turned off the standby power, selector to off. And in this case, the captain's outboard DU, inboard DU, upper DU, uh, and the control display unit all go blank. So this is what it looks like when the displays are not displaying any information. If we take the standby power selector and we put it in auto again, then you can see we have the displays uh, as they should be with the PFD on the outboard, the ND on the inboard, primary ICAS on the upper DU, and secondary ICAS on the lower DU. Let's take a look at uh, a failure of the outboard display unit. So if we go into our failure uh, menu, this happens to be Microsoft uh, FSX. And if we go to our flight instrument section and we find the uh, captain's uh, display unit for the outboard and we fail it, uh, then we will see that the outboard DU fails and the PFD automatically moves to the inboard display unit as long as this switch is in normal. Again, it's protected, so it automatically moves. Because the ND is not here, we can now take our lower CRT switch, and we can move it to the ND position, and then we'll force the navigation display to come down here on the lower display unit. Primary and secondary now compact on the upper display unit. This would be an automatic switching uh, failure where the PFD was protected and it moved automatically. Let's take the failure out now, remove the malfunction. And when we remove the malfunction, as long as the inboard CRT switch is in normal, then the PFD will resume its normal place on the outboard display unit. So let's take the failure out. And now you can see that the PFD will automatically switch back to the outboard. Of course, if we had a failure of our outboard display unit and it goes blank, and then all we see is the ND or the navigation display, then we'd know the automatic switching did not automatically switch. And in that case, we're going to be able to come up here and force it to switch by taking our inboard CRT switch and moving it to PFD, which will force the PFD to the inboard CRT. So that's what we're going to see next here for manual switching. So here we've taken the inboard CRT switch, put it to PFD, and that forces the PFD to automatically move to the inboard CRT. Then I could take my ND switch, or my lower CRT switch, put it to ND, and that will move the ND to the lower display unit. And now you're seeing your PFD and ND, uh, as you should, because this display is blank. 
That completes our discussion of the electronic flight instrument system, display system, and uh, switching. Let's lower the HUD and let's go flying. Until our next briefing, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.